three minutes, three things to watch out for. Mike, myself, Stephen Farnsworth. All right, we're going to get to it, all right? All right. Three opportunities. First one that I want to talk about, read an article on Bigger Pockets. If you guys aren't familiar with it, it's like the biggest forum kind of website thing. On you know, they got a podcast one out about real estate. If you guys want to learn about real estate, that's probably the biggest bigger um, pockets. Yeah, bigger pockets. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's probably like not like ninety percent of my foundation of, of okay. where I learn stuff. Huh. Honestly, yeah. it's like farmers only for gold diggers. Gold diggers. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, read an article on a, on a, on a <laughs> <laughs> we needed that. <laughs> Uh, on a, an investor that's been in the market for like 40, 50 years, so he, so he was an older guy, you know, in his like 60s or 70s, he wrote an article about how this year is going to be the year that he invests most in real estate. And he was talking about the, the multiple cycles, the multiple decades that were involved yeah. during with the interest rates and things like that. So his biggest thing was the reason why he's investing so much is because rates will go up. And I think the opportunity right now for you guys to leverage, use leverage, which is a powerful, powerful asset and tool to, fu- to increase your, your wealth substantially, is, is just take action on it C- completely, right? And I, my, myself, I'm pretty maxed out. So, I mean, I, I can't take any more. If I could, I would tomorrow. But if you have the opportunity to, I definitely would use leverage, okay? Just for that tool, all right? Um, I talked a minute and a half. The second thing I want to talk about is just the power of networking, all right? And the reason why, I, I kind of brought this up uh, yesterday, but I was talking to a buddy last night. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I wanna, I'm going to start a gym out in Tacoma, uh, this and that, this and that, this and that. And um, I was like, hey, dude, I might, I might be down to invest. He already, he already has investors, so he might not need the capital. But the moral of the story is, like, I talk all the time with people. People know that I invest, and so I, I get pitched – Ninety um, percent, it's crap. Like let's yeah. be real. But there's ten percent that that's that's pretty solid. Huh. You know what I'm saying? So I think just just saying like, hey, you're an investor and whatnot, you'll get pitch things. You know, you get a movie, you get a business, you get a real estate deal, you yeah. get a you know maybe a invest in uh, Amazon. Um, so just just kind of be open about it. Yeah. Those yeah. are my two opportunities. What do you got? Right. Okay. Well, you actually stole one of mine. One was going to be networking, and I, I I'll echo this actually just because in, in speaking with you, speaking with you. It is interesting how much more when I do speak with people, how often it is that I hear about opportunities. And something that I, I, I wish I'd been more active in doing so earlier because I think I'd have more opportunities to have, to have invested. Awesome. And even you just mentioned, like even when it comes to just individual stocks, like obviously there's like insider trading laws that can really prevent you from, from finding out things you shouldn't know about certain stocks. But you also can know people. I mean, I've had lots of people who have told me about stocks that they own or people they know that work certain companies that are great companies that I otherwise wouldn't have known about mm. outside of those relationships that I've invested in and done really well. And a lot of it's just because you, you know you can make these relationships. So that's one thing that I think is big. Second thing, and it's, and it's something I've touched on kind of throughout this, this, this whole night, um, and it's hidden me a little bit more. When you ask why I'm so frugal, one of the reasons is, is I want to be an accredited investor. Now there are laws changing right now about accredited investors like that will make it easier for regular people to invest their money into things that aren't usually available. But right now, the, the guidelines of being an accredited investor, you have to make about 200,000 bucks a year in income, which you know, I'm not there, but it's something to, to be. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, not, it's not out of sight. Um, and you need to have a million dollars worth of capital. And so that's something that I want to have opportunities that many wealthy people have to invest. And so any opportunity you have can either, you can find opportunities through networking that don't, that mean you don't have to be an accredited investor, but second is you you can strive every day to get to a situation where you can be an accredited investor. Boom! Three and three. We did it in yeah. four minutes. Last week we did it in six. six. So, so we're getting better. better. Yeah, we're getting better. All right, guys. Thanks, guys. Mike, myself, yeah, Stephen Farnsworth, Lifestyle Investing. Those are your opportunities.